In several of our last videos, I've now attempted to smelt iron a few times to get us into the Iron Age, each time succeeding in producing iron, but nothing that was super effective for actual forging and blacksmithing. A lot of work later, and I was able to forge a super small and thin blade, but an iron tool nonetheless. So now ready to fully unlock iron, my goal is to get to the point of making at least one solid ingot, so I can start from that point moving forward for all my upcoming tool needs. Taking some advice earlier. Look up Aristotle furnaces. That might be a good option. Redoing this down into a usable bloom. And what I got to see firsthand while working with the guys from Good and Basic, I constructed an Aristotle furnace. Acting as basically a small bloomery, it allows me to enter a high enough temperature to again consolidate all of my scraps from my first two blooms into a more solid and workable bloom of iron. Since I have made iron at this point, I'm also going to mix in a collection of scrap iron to help add a little extra volume to our bloom. After doing a preheat the night before, adding all the scrap metal, and then later all the actual bloom and scraps we've had so far from our other attempts, and then ran it for all of the next day. The end result is a new bloom that should hopefully be a little bit more successful and a little bit more consolidated. All right, so this is the very end of it now. We've been running it for uh, like five or six hours. Try to consolidate as much as possible with a big stick. And uh, we got a pretty solid mass at the bottom. I think it's pretty promising. Let's check it out. Let's see if we got a nice bloom at the bottom. Once again repeating the same process I did in my first couple attempts, a lot of the bloom still was not consolidating and would just shatter. But eventually working through all the pieces, I found a few promising chunks that I was able to flatten and stack, and with a little help with some borax, eventually form into small ingots. Now I can say I finally unlocked a promising starting point for some real blacksmithing. So let's meet up with an expert smith to learn some basics and get my collection of iron tools started. All right, so I'm here with Alex Yeel, the blacksmith extraordinaire. I just like making stuff, <laughs> that's about it. So I've been working my way up through the Bronze Age and now into the Iron Age. I have a few different bronze tools, but I need to start making iron tools. And you're kind of the expert. What, what do I need to make first? I think one of the first things you've got to make is a pair of tongs so that you can hold the iron. Those bronze tongs look awesome, but they're going to heat up fast. They're going to you know, be a little bit soft. One of the key things is being able to hold the metal. So if we make some iron tongs, you're going to be well set to make whatever it is you want to make from there. Use those tongs to make more tongs, all that good stuff. Let's give it a shot. So I'm going to take the round side of our hammer, line up the bar here. Now I take a left turn. I come to the far side of the anvil. Another left turn. And so what we're doing is we're just isolating mass for the jaw, for the pivot area, and for the rings. You're up with the round side of your hammer, you're aiming in the middle of that edge. Very good. Feel for the shoulder, you've got it. Two hard blows. Love it, good posture. There we go, good. Now we're gonna make a left turn, then we're gonna come up to the far edge of the anvil. Just make sure you're slow enough with your blows so that every time it moves after you hit, you can reposition. Perfect. Love it. Great. And let's take another heat. Now we have our shoulder set. And now let's go back through the whole thing. So let's start at the jaw, then onto the pivot area. Great. And then take a left turn. Got the steps down. You've broken down the jaw, the pivot area, the transition to the reins. I'm going to come down and begin making those reins right here. I'm going to start drawing out the bulk of the reins. Here we go, we'll start thinning it down. I use this far edge of the anvil because it's really aggressive. So much so that it actually, if you look really closely, is actually getting hotter from hitting it. Get off of there. Let's... Look at that, it's like half a pair of tongs already. 
Now with the flat side of the hammer, every time you hit, I want you to turn 90 degrees towards you and feed in a little bit. Very good. And then we'll take another heat and we'll do the exact same thing again. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the corners off of this and then rounding it. You imagine you're a lathe. So just keep rotating as you hammer. Very nice. All right, Andy, we have made half a pair of your tongs. We're making one half here and then we're making another half flipped the other way. Make them all in one piece. Theoretically, we then don't need tongs to make tongs. Apart from the tongs that I'm using right now to cool down the tongs that we're making. <laughs> in which case, we do need tongs. But you could do this with a leatherman or your teeth if you're particularly brave. It's really funny material because as I'm working this, it's like working with a floppy bit of spaghetti, you know? But by the time this is done, it's gonna be a really stout pair of tongs. So, this is one half of our tongs. We just gotta cut it off and do the other half. And then from there, we'll be able to finish off the jaw section. It's like a sculpture. Good. And then we're gonna work it down some more. But right there, we're gonna make another shoulder. And we'll keep thinning that back down. Outstanding. Jaw, pivot, reins. That's one pair of tongs in one bar. I'm gonna have you hold it while I punch it, okay? So I'm gonna hit it, and I take the tool out. Hit, take the tool out. Ta-da! <laughs> about 80% of the hole got moved, only losing about 20% of the material of the hole. This time I'm gonna hold it. Don't hit your hand. Perfect. There we go. It's amazing. We're gonna flip it over. Oh, so it's basically out of there. Hey, hey, look at that! Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a groove in it. This is what is gonna grip our stock. You can also do a little cross hatching on the tongs. There we go. There we go, that's it. Perfect, and then rotate as you hit. Woohoo! As they say in them southern parts, yee-haw. Two halves of a tongue. Take one half, hold it over the round hole on the anvil, put the drift in, and then pushing back and forth in the hole, you will drive the drift through. And that's one drifted hole. Perfect. Love it. Well done. And we need to put a rivet in there. Because we need half the material on one side, half the material on another, we need to support these tongs halfway up where the rivet needs to be. Put the rivet through our hole, put the rivet in this hole, break the rivet off, drop the half piece of steel, hammer over the rivet, and I'll have you rivet over the other side. Very nice. Riveting, I should say. Ha 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 ha. We need to get them loose. We're just gonna work it back and forth. And because it's hot and malleable, the stuff's gonna move around and be good to go. Let's get them to hold something. So we'll heat them up and we'll get a little bit of bar and we'll shove it in there. Give it a little hammer, and there we go. That's all it takes. I present to you, Andy, your own tongs. Awesome, get the necessary testing. This will definitely be useful. Thank you for the help, and uh, be sure to check out Alex Steele's channel for all your blacksmithing knowledge. We just look at the camera very awkwardly. <laughs> It's all good, they're all gone now. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right, so thanks to Alex Steele, we now have a set of iron tongs. I got a little bit of an introduction to blacksmithing. Right now we're back. It's kind of a new set working on for kind of building a blacksmithing studio. It's still under construction, I don't show over there. I'll eventually get it set up with a primitive forge and uh, we can kind of do this period authentic forging. We've done primitive uh, forging a few times now in just a pit. I'm gonna move on to a gas one just for kind of efficiency as I kind of get the hang of blacksmithing and then eventually want to go back to the more primitive method. Now that we've kind of conducted the, the first step of making some actual workable iron or making some billets, we can actually start making some more iron tools. Now that we have unlocked a small piece, got a few more here of larger size. I'm gonna combine them and try to make an iron hammer. As uh, Alex Steele mentioned, the bronze, will work, but it's a little bit softer and uh, it conducts heat a lot better. So it's kind of sucking heat out a lot faster, which when you're forging something, you want it to stay hot as possible. I'm gonna try and forge weld a few of these pieces together to get a nice sizable chunk, then shape it. And then like how Alex Steele had his, we want a flat end and a round end. We can both flatten and move the metal. Let's slide up the forge. Now it's hammer time.
All right, so I got two sets of the billards. Pretty well forged well together now. They seem pretty solid. Now I'm gonna stack them on top of each other. I'm not sure if I should stack them four tall and then hammer them flat or do two by two. But I think I'm gonna try just two by two, see if that works. Maybe this will make a difference. Let's give it a shot and see what happens. All right, so after a bit of work, I have two hammers now hafted onto a handle. The first one ended up just in the process of trying to forge weld it. Struggled a lot with that. Ended up shrinking a lot, which apparently that happens, I guess. Have some basic tools now. I think one of the biggest challenges is kind of knowing what tools you need and then having those tools to do the right processes. So having only a few tools makes it pretty hard. Um, the bronze tools, did the job, but I uh, had to hit it so hard that I have uh, cracked both of the handles of the hammers and the anvil rock that I was using has now shattered. So, gonna need to work on some additional tools as well. The tongs from Alec were very useful. Now I have basically the beginner set for blacksmithing. So it's pretty obvious that I have a lot to learn with blacksmithing and it's a little bit harder than I was expecting. So moving forward, just to keep our goals moving, I'm gonna be bringing in some extra help. Now that we've gotten into the Iron Age, we're gonna focus on our next kind of power multiplier and that's going to be power itself. Some early forms of powered tools, such as the sawmill. I'm gonna start trying to capture things like water and wind, get a little help so we don't have to do this by hand. This will be kind of setting the foundation for the eventual goal of the reset, which is our own industrial revolution and steam engine. We'll be working on that next. Thanks everybody for watching. And thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. If you wanna see us reach some higher milestones like this, consider supporting us. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.